Hey y'all, hi. I am so excited to be finally filming this video. It's going to be a deep dive, super thorough review of this gorgeous sweater that I have on right here. It is, for me, a really quite expensive piece and one that I consider to be an investment piece. I'm going to be thoroughly reviewing it and also talking about what it even means to buy an investment piece for a wardrobe. Like what do we mean? What do I mean when I say that? And how can the idea of that add maybe perspective to your decision making when you're shopping through the lens? I'm going to be talking about that through the lens of like how it adds perspective to mine and all of that through the lens of my decision to buy this sweater. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's just start the video. This is the Baba sweater in the shade Oak. It's the jumper number 17. I've wanted it for like three years and I finally bought it recently. So I had to film a whole video about it. And I know a lot of you are really curious about it too. So we're gonna do the thing. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm really glad that you are here. My name is Hannah. I am a passionate lover of beautiful things. So passionate that that passion has kind of defined the course of my life in a lot of ways. And I've ended up here on YouTube talking about my love of beauty, but also doing it with a bit of a quality over quantity bent because I used to have a problem where I spent way too much money and bought way too many things. And I'm trying to recover from that and I also don't want to encourage that. So if that kind of balanced beauty loving content sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. So this is my classic insanely thorough review. I have sketched out the video using questions, the questions that I had about this sweater before I bought it and the questions that I think you might want me to answer as I review it. I'm going to go through and answer the questions one by one. So I'll tell you what the questions are now and I'll also timestamp every question so you can navigate through the video if you're only interested in the answer to certain questions. The first several questions are going to be background information and again, Again, if you're not interested in the background information, you can click ahead to where I just talked directly about the sweater. But first I'm going to answer the question, what is an investment piece? Like what does that mean to me? Then I'll answer the question, why did I hope that this sweater would be an investment piece for my wardrobe? Then I'll go on to talk about why I picked this sweater of all of the sweaters that Baba has on offer because they make a lot of really beautiful sweaters. And then lastly, as far as background information is concerned, I will talk about who bought it and why now. When I talk about, especially an expensive thing on my channel, I always like to specify like why, how the thing came into my life. Was it sent to me for review? Did someone else buy it for me? Did I buy it for myself? And if so, did I use my own money like my personal income or did I use the channel's budget for review? I feel like it's really important to put a purchase like this in context in a review because I want you as a viewer to be able to position yourself as accurately as possible with relation to the video, like position yourself and your financial situation with relation to what I'm saying. So those will be all the background questions and then I'll move on to the heart of the review, which is the discussion of the sweater itself. These are the questions I'll be answering. How is it delivered? I had no information about this before I bought it. I was only guessing and I was wrong about how it was delivered and what the packaging was like. What is it like in person? Like what is it physically like in person? This is also something that was, I, I couldn't find any information about this on the internet before I bought it, even though I had been curious about it. I've been following its career for years. So what's the texture like? What's the fit like? What's the feel like? Even what is the color like in person compared to the website? Then I will talk about how much I have worn it and how much I think I'm going to wear it. So like, how is it fitting itself into my life? I've owned it for a couple of months now, so I'll be able to talk a little bit about how it's worn over time. Like, has it changed? Has it, has anything happened to it that makes it not look or feel brand new anymore. Then I'll talk about what its care will entail, like how I plan to care for it going forward, how I'm going to wash it. Do I think that it will last forever? Important for an investment piece. And lastly, was it worth it for me? Like, am I glad that I bought it? 
then I'll give you my final thoughts. Jumping right into the background questions. Question number one, what is an investment piece for a wardrobe? So this is a term that gets thrown around a lot in the fashion world, like, oh, it's an investment piece. It's code for saying that the thing is really expensive. Like it's a way that salespeople try to calm you when you're like worried about spending so much money on one thing. They're like, oh, it's okay to spend $400 on one thing because it's an investment piece. It makes it sound like spending a lot on the thing is a smart thing to do. And I think that that is why it's such a popular term. It's it's a marketing term. However, I use the term for myself in a way that makes sense for me and that I, I feel like in my own inner life, in the world of, of my like collecting of things, I've kind of reclaimed and redefined this term for myself. Some people really don't like to see the term investment used to refer to anything that doesn't have a monetary return. Because the most technical definition of an investment is that you put money in and, more, and it creates more money. Like it's money creating money. And when you talk about an investment purchase, it's not actually an investment in that way unless you're planning to resell the thing later at, at a, a higher price point than what you paid for it. And that's not what I mean in my life when I say that I've made an investment purchase for my wardrobe. For me, it means a couple of things. So I do think of it in terms of spending a certain amount of money in order to get a return of something that's greater than what I spent, except that the return for me isn't in money. So I'm thinking of like spending more than I would ordinarily spend all at one time on something like a sweater. And the return on that investment of that money is going to be in an amount of pleasure that I'll take in that thing and confidence and comfort and warmth and all the things that, all the practical things that clothing offers. All of those things will come back to me in the form of the thing or come back to me because of the thing so many fold that together they add up to an amount of good, like an amount of value of of pleasure and joy and usefulness in my life that is worth more than the amount of money that I paid. And I think really importantly, will continue to exist. Like those, those elements of pleasure and practicality will continue to exist in my life for a long time. It's not money coming back, but it's something that I really, really value. And so that's why it feels appropriate to use the term. But there's another thing that is more to do with money that I consider to be another kind of return on this investment. And that is this. The hope is that owning this sweater will keep me from buying cheaper imitations of it theoretically forever. Never buying another sweater at any price point that serves the role that this one serves, that looks and feels like this one, this color and this cut. Wearing this piece over and over and over again, wearing it instead of a bunch more sweaters that look kind of like it but aren't quite as nice and will wear out sooner, and therefore never buying those, like never again buying a sweater that does what this one does for me, that will, the theory of the investment is that that will save me hundreds of dollars over the course of the rest of my lifetime. More, way more than the amount that this sweater cost. So it is an investment to me if it is the last of its kind that I ever have to buy barring some kind of disaster. You know what I mean? Like if it gets eaten up by moths or if it's lost or something like that. This also depends on me feeling confident that I will love wearing it forever. So the styling and the styling is such that I will continue to wear it for the rest of my life. And the quality is such that it will continue to last for the rest of my life. If I feel confident about those things, then there is to me a return on the investment that's monetary in, an, in a negative way, meaning that I won't be buying this any version of this sweater ever again for the rest of my life. So I'm talking about it in terms of this sweater because it's what we're talking about today, but that is just, this sweater is just an example to answer the question of what I consider an investment piece in my wardrobe to be. There's actually another thing that I consider to be an investment piece in my wardrobe right here behind me. It's my Polen 
bag, see that orange purse right there in the background? That was actually a gift. My sister gave it to me for my birthday some years ago. But I think of it in the same way. I wear it all the time, but it's beautifully made. It's gonna last forever. I'm happy to like have it cleaned over and over again instead of buying new bags. And I will never buy another orange bag. I'll never buy actually like another sort of like rust or anything close to that. And, and I never need to buy another bag that's its size again, because whenever I need a bag that size, I'm happy to carry that one. It's just the forever piece for me. And it actually has stopped me on numerous occasions over the past three or four years from buying a bag its size, because so many bags come in that size. And almost every time I've been tempted to buy a bag, I've been like, oh no, I still have my, I have my Polen bag, so I don't need that. So if I had purchased it, it would have already saved me several times the amount that I had spent on it in other bags that I didn't buy. I think I've thoroughly explained myself, but I just wanted to give another example besides the sweater. I think a piece can be considered an investment piece solely based on pleasure. Like if you are just, if you just know that something is going to be the joy, the absolute joy of your life and that you're going to feel good every time you look at it or wear it, especially if it's a thing that you're going to get a lot of use out of, like something that you use every day or wear every day. I think that that's enough of a, re for me, just those feelings, the joy, that's enough of a reason to call something an investment because it's an investment in yourself and your joy in your life, even if it's not going to make you money. But in my own life, I find that when something occupies that space, it almost always, if not actually always, does the other thing too. Because when I feel that way about a thing, it always effectively stems the flood of like voracious desire for more, more, more. My love for the thing causes me to turn that outward reaching inward onto my own life and helps me to cherish what I already own. And that's something that as a passionate lover of beautiful things, it's a really important practice for me. It's really important for me to develop that tool, that ability to to cherish, to turn inward and cherish instead of just buying, buying, wanting, wanting, seeking, seeking. And it's something that's taken me some time. It's been a long time coming. It's taken a lot of inner work, some therapy, my no buy year. It, it's been hard, you know, for me to get there. And so I recognize it when it's happening and it's worth it to me. Sometimes it's worth to pay more money to have a thing occupy that space and serve that role in my life. I guess what I'm saying here as the last piece of the answer to the question about what I mean when I talk about an investment piece is that there's a benefit that's not just monetary to having a thing that you love so much that it keeps you from buying other things that are similar to it. Because yeah, of course, it's going to save me money having this sweater and not feeling tempted to buy a bunch of fast fashion version, fast fashion versions of this ever. Yeah, it's going to save me money, but it also keeps me in the space of loving what I own. It keeps me feeling my happiness, feeling it like as a tactile thing. It keeps me in that space and, and holds me in that space and doesn't let me drift back into that like climbing and, and seeking and wanting and searching space. And frankly, that is, it sometimes feels more valuable to me than, than money. <laughs> that it's priceless. That, that is priceless. Okay. Question number two, why did I hope that this would be an investment piece? Why did I suspect that it might fit the definition that I just gave you, fulfill the role that I just outlined for you in my answer to the first question? So firstly, it's physical qualities, right? The super sturdy material, it's wool. I love wool. When I'm cold, it's like wool is the only thing that will warm me. So I know that I get along really well with 100% pure wool. I also know that pure wool is likely to stand the test of time. And Baba does actually advertise with the catchphrase, like, wear forever. I'm going to look on their Instagram. Yeah, it's all over their Instagram, all over their website. It's like, wear it forever, love it forever. They are making pieces that they claim are investment pieces in that way right? So the materials that they choose and the way that they construct the pieces, they're designed to last forever. I also find the material itself to be timeless, like this beautiful chunky wool, it, especially in this neutral cozy color, it's never going to be like unfashionable or like look like you're not with it. At least that's how I feel. I mean, in my life, I feel like that's going to be the case. I, just, I think that the, the silhouette is also beautifully timeless. It's for me, 
really slouchy, oversized. I love the way, I love that style. I love the way that it looks. I feel like it's always going to work as a piece of fashion and as a practical piece in terms of keeping me warm and making me comfortable and cozy. And I think that this will also work if my body changes and as I age, because it's so, it's it's oversized, super slouchy. I think the shape is very, very versatile for me with where I'm starting from. I can easily imagine myself still wanting to wear this, even if I like, I don't know, gain 50 pounds. It will still fit and I will still want to wear it. I'll still look and feel like my best in it, like my best self. I can definitely imagine myself wearing this when I'm 85 years old. I feel like stylistically it will still work. And I thought about all of those things before I made the purchase. Because you can't claim that something's an investment piece or that it's worth the price to you because you'll wear it forever if it doesn't fit those bills. And there's one last thing that's really important as a part of the answer to this question, which is that one of the things that made me hope or suspect that this would be an investment piece enough to take the risk of spending the money on it is that I have a confidence in my decisions, in my knowledge of my own style that comes from the fact that I'm 36 years old. I've been dressing myself for three decades and I've gone through a lot of iterations, like my style has gone through a lot of iterations. And I can see when I look back over the course of my life, which things that I loved to wear were fads in my life and which things have have just stayed consistent throughout. And I feel confident that there's a bunch of stuff that I love right now, right? Like I love chunky knits and I also really love, I don't know, gold knuckle rings or whatever. I feel like the chunky knits like this, it's something that I know it's with me forever. It's something that I'm going to love forever. And there are other things that I'm attracted to right now and might like want to buy or want to wear, but I know better, better than to think that I can know for sure that I'm going to love those things forever. I have purchased countless iterations of this sweater in cheaper versions over the course of my lifetime, and I have worn them all out. Lately, what I've been doing is buying them, buying this kind of thing, like secondhand from Poshmark or something like that. And it's sometimes it's been like fast fashion, but it's being sold secondhand. I bought a couple sweaters like this last year, actually, from Poshmark, spending $20 on each one and, you know, probably less than $50 overall. And all three of them are already like dingy, falling apart, super pilly, and they don't keep me that warm because they're not 100% wool. I'm positive that I've spent the amount that this sweater costs on past versions of it, cheaper versions of it, probably several times over. And it's something that I've always loved. This kind of thing is something that I've always loved to wear and that I've always spent money on. So that contributed to my confidence when I took the risk of spending the amount that I spent on it. Why did I pick the one that I picked? So Baba offers a couple of different fibers. There's this one, which is like the pure wool. There's a merino wool. It's like a more a fine, thin wool. There's a, a cotton. They have like a chunky cotton. And then I think they have thinner cotton. And I think they have a linen as well. And maybe a couple of other iterations of those fibers that I haven't mentioned. But I picked this straight up wool. It's just 100% 100 wool and it's like quite thick. I love wearing wool in the winter, so that was easy for me. I know that wool irritates some people. It doesn't irritate me. It's my absolute favorite thing to have next to my skin, even when it's not super, super smooth like cashmere, which reminds me of things that Baba also has some cashmere garments. But I knew right away, it's 100%, it's, it is 100% wool for me all the way. It's like my favorite, a big chunky wool sweater is like my favorite thing. So that narrowed it down. And then uh, I was looking at the wool sweaters and they have a whole bunch of silhouettes. Some of them are more oversized. Some of them are more cropped. Some of them are a little bit smaller. Some have these big tall turtlenecks and some have different kinds of necklines and all of them are very beautiful and it was difficult to choose. I love a turtleneck like this. Like I love a high neck. That was a really easy decision for me. And I also really like this, the number 17 because it's long. It comes down on me like I'm, I'm quite tall. I'm like five nine and I and I have a really long waist. I love an oversized sweater that's actually oversized on me that like comes down past my hips and like covers my butt that I can wear with leggings. And this from what I could tell was going to be that great length. It's not so long that it's like a dress on me. It probably is that way on some people, but it's it's past the hip. You know what I mean? It comes all the way past pretty much my entire bottom. And I'll be in inserting some images of myself wearing the sweaters. You can see exactly how it fits on me. And I'll put 
my measurements down in the description box in case you're really trying to judge like what how it will fit on your body or how it will hang on your body. So I've had my eye on Baba for a long time. The whole time I've known that I wanted the number 17 jumper, the one with this like big, it's like the biggest, most smothering, like body encompassing one. And I knew that that was the one for me. And then when it came down to it, I had to decide on color. I decided on this one, Oak, because I feel like it's it's really stain resistant. <laughs> like, I, there are a lot of colors that I love. I really like some of the lighter grays. I really like the cream colored one. I really like this camel colored one. I almost got that camel colored one. Almost. It was like between that one and this one. But at the end of the day, when I was about to make the purchase and I was just thinking like, what if I get this sweater and I love it and I live in it and I wear it all the time and then I like spill wine on it? or like sauce or grease on it. I know myself and I know that if I have a sweater like this, I'm just gonna wanna wear it all the time. Like whenever I'm cold, it's gonna be the only thing that I'll wanna wear. So I wanted to get it in an, a super sturdy color. Of course, it doesn't hurt that I quite like this color. I like how it works with my wardrobe, it works with everything that I own. But I was also really thinking about longevity. And it's like, I know that I could spill something on this and I can clean it to the, I'll be able to clean it to the point where it doesn't look like it's ruined. And that was important to me when dropping $250. I didn't want to end up with something that was delicate in any way. And one of the reasons that this isn't is its color. So who bought it and why now? Sometimes my YouTube channel makes a purchase or like I make a purchase with the budget that the channel has specifically for the purpose of reviewing something. For example, right now I'm testing this Victoria Beckham makeup. It was very expensive, but I didn't buy this with like money from my own bank account. The YouTube channel has a budget for a review and I used part of that budget to buy that makeup so that I could make a video about it. In this case though, that is not what happened. I took money from my own personal bank account and spent it on the sweater of my own accord, kind of knowing that I might make a YouTube video about it, but that wasn't the agenda and it wasn't the plan or the reason for the purchase at all. I just wanted the sweater. The money that I spent on it, essentially it's from some of the freelance work that I do. I, I do this YouTube work and the YouTube channel makes money, but I also do some work on the side as a freelance grant writer. These days when I'm buying something for myself that's like from my personal budget for beautiful things, that's pretty much where it's coming from. So it's like work that I've done that's actually not even related to the YouTube channel and the purchase is not related to the YouTube channel. And here on the channel, we're just benefiting from the fact, like with the creation of this video, we're all just benefiting, benefiting from the fact that I wanted to spend some of my personal budget for beautiful things on this particular sweater that some of you have an interest in the review of preposition. Why now? Ugh, I mean, I think it in, I've wanted it for years, as I said, why didn't I buy it before? Because it's so expensive. Why did I finally bite the bullet? Uh, it's two things. One, I, had wanted it for so long that I felt really confident that I was just going to keep wanting it until I bought it. So it's actually three things. That, and um, I had taken a really long break from buying anything. So I had purchased some things like, I can't remember the how it went down now, but I had, I had like made a bunch of purchases all at once in the middle of the year. And then I had taken like a several month hiatus actually from like shopping for myself. So I got to the point where I was like, my personal budget is feeling like beefy. You know, I was like, I really, I've really been keeping the purse strings tight. And so I was feeling like it was an ideal moment to make this purchase that I'd been waiting and waiting and waiting to make. But the third thing that happened is that some moths ate some of my sweaters. That was really crushing. I love knitwear. It's like my favorite kind of garment pretty much. And when I unpacked some of my sweaters at the beginning of the winter, I found like moth holes. Three of my sweaters were like completely destroyed by moths. And so for that kind of practical reason, I felt justified in going ahead and getting the sweater I've always wanted, like the last one of its kind that I'll ever have to buy sort of, because I had just like, my sweater wardrobe had really shrunk by a, shrunk by a couple 
couple of significant pieces. So all of those factors contributed to my decision to go ahead and buy the sweater when I did. So that is how it happened and why it happened. And now we're moving on to talk about the actual sweater itself. I'm going to tell you exactly what it's like in person. If you skipped all of that stuff and you're just skipping to this part of the video, then hello. I'm glad that we've been reunited and I'm excited to journey forward together with you. All right, I'm going to talk about how it was delivered. And I actually have uh, like an exhibit for you because I purchased a Baba sweater for my mother for Christmas. Oh, I hope she's not watching. If you're watching, mom, <laughs> it's not this one. You're never going to know what it looks. Actually, you will, You should stop watching. It's not this one, though. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't have a big turtleneck. It's a different style. And I haven't taken it out of its packaging yet so that I'll be able to show you exactly what it looks like, at least when you order a sweater from Baba in North America, because I don't know if they ship differently to different parts of the world. But I live in California, and here is what arrived on my doorstep not too long after I ordered it. It was like maybe within a week after I'd ordered this sweater, here's what showed up. This. Because, because I have wanted this sweater for so long, and I mean, $250 is a lot of money, but it's, it's not like $800. I, it's not like $1,500. It's not like we're over here buying like a piece of Chanel or Gucci or something like that. But I think the combination of the price point and the fact that it had become so mythical in my life made me imagine that it would be shipped in this like incredibly luxurious box with like surrounded by roses and like tissue paper. And I, I felt like a barbershop quartet was going to like show up at the door and sing a little, sing Baba Black Sheep to me like while I was unboxing it or something. Like on some level, that's what I was, I was expecting. So when it came in this package, I was like, oh. And I wasn't disappointed because I immediately realized that they, and I I mean, I think a different kind of reviewer would probably be talking more about this, but this company is amazing because they're incredibly conscientious and ethical. And this is just an extension of that, right? Like they're trying to save on packaging. It's not elaborate. It's not expensive, the packaging. So it doesn't add to the cost of the sweater. You're not paying extra to have a luxurious unboxing experience. I'm 100% all for that. And I'm really excited that the packaging itself that's inside this UPS mailer, the package that it comes in is it's just a paper bag. So no plastic, love to see it. Totally easily recyclable, doesn't take up a lot of space and it's perfect and I absolutely love it. I 100% endorse the way that they package and ship their sweaters. I just am telling you because I was surprised. I mean, it's luxurious in its own minimalist way. It's it's very well designed. Like it's it's beautiful and pleasurable, but it's not the kind of fanfare around a luxury purchase that we, some of us have come to expect. And I actually think it's the greatest because especially as someone who receives like PR samples from brands. And so a, more like boxes with stuff in them, like makeup mostly are coming through my life than ever have before and then ordinarily would. So I'm always like opening a box and inside is like an elaborate other box. And inside that box is like another thing. And there's all of, there will be all of these like inserts and cardboard and just all of this infrastructure to create fanfare around a product. All of that costs money. All of it has to be manufactured. All of that affects the environment. And a lot of it can't be recycled or disposed of in any way. It just goes into the landfill. And so I feel like we need more of this and we need to start getting used to it. And we need to start understanding that this is its own kind of luxury. This is like above. To me, this is above that other stuff. This is better than. It's the future. So I want to point it out so that if you make a purchase, you'll know what to expect. And I also want to commend Baba for this decision. Oh my gosh, this wasn't in mine. This is so amazing. It's a poem. It's in Spanish and I, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I'll hold it up. All right, are you ready? Oh my gosh, it's so lovely. It's so lovely. Let's talk about what it's like in person physically and I'll be able to actually tell you about the one that I have on and the one that I just opened. So. This one that I have on, the thing that I was the most curious about would be the tech was the texture, like how thick, how thick it is, how thick the sweater is, and whether or not it was scratchy, and if so, how scratchy. And I think you can see how thick it is. Hopefully you can see the 
the heft and how it's sort of like spongy. It's thick and it's sort of like spongy, right? So it's very, very hefty, more than it looks on the website. I feel like from the website, it looked like it could have been a bit lighter weight and and drapier kind of, but I was hoping it would be this kind of like beefy, spongy quality, and it is that way. Love it. This one, the one that I have, was also quite scratchy when I opened it. I was a little bit shocked. And again, I don't mind. I love wool and scratchiness doesn't bother me at all. And I was delighted that it felt so raw and I immediately put it on and I've been happy ever since, right? So it's not an issue for me what I'm about to tell you, but I need to give you fair warning. I was, because I know that these are issues for some people. I was shocked at how scratchy it was and how much it smelled like sheep. And it even has like little bits of, or it had little, little like sticks in it, like little bits of fiber of, of like organic material woven in. It very much felt like someone had just sheared a sheep, spun the wool into this gorgeous thick wool, knitted the sweater, and then stuck it in a paper bag and sent it off to me. Like it was, it was just like incredibly earthy and raw. It smelled like I had just stuck my face into a pile of sheep. It smelled like lanolin. And again, I loved it. I was over the moon and I have been ever since. I love that. But I know that it's very particular and I just haven't seen anything about this anywhere. And I've gotten so many questions from you guys, like in DMs and stuff being like, is it scratchy? What is it like? And the answer to that for this one, the one that I bought, the brown one, is that, yeah, it's really scratchy when it first comes out of the package. It's really, really like earthy and raw and beefy and just exactly what you would imagine from like a, a minimally processed kind of like w- really natural thick wool sweater. However, there are two kind of treatments of the wool, of this wool that Baba does. This one, the one that I have, it hasn't been dyed or treated or washed or anything. It's just been spun and knitted and then the sweater's been put together. The colorful sweaters, like the red one, these wools have been dyed. So what you're seeing in this in this brown sweater, it's like the color of the sheep. The sheep themselves made this color. But there is not a sheep this color. So for the red, they've treated the wool much more extensively than they have for these raw colors. So it has had to be washed so that it could be dyed. And that means that the wool is much softer when it first comes out of the package. This texture of this color is much softer. So if you are not allergic to wool, but you don't like scratchy things and you want the sweater to be softer when you first get it, don't get this or any of the grays. It says pretty clearly in the listing. Um, I actually think they, the dyed colors no longer say in the listing that they're dyed. The raw colors say in the listing that they're raw. Let me see what language they use. So in the listing, it says this shade is non-dyed, made directly with the fleece from our sheep. If you see that sentence in the listing, then you know that it's going to be scratchy when you get it. However, this sweater has softened over time and I haven't washed it or anything. It's less scratchy now than it was when I first pulled it out of the package when it was absolutely brand new. That's just because I've been wearing it. It's been rubbing up against my body. It's been getting warm from my body and it's just gotten broken in and it's gotten softer. So I think eventually, especially after I wash it a couple of times with water, eventually it'll be as soft as the other colors. But I could easily see it, easily see it being too scratchy to even start that process for some people. But I could also see those same people being okay with how soft the color version is, the dyed version. That's how dramatic to me the difference is between the scratchiness of this when it first arrived and the relative softness of the red. So the thickness and the rawness and like the sheepiness and the scratchiness of the sweater, that's actually the thing that made me the most eager to film this review. I, it wouldn't have deterred me from buying it. And again, I, I kind of loved it all the more because of that quality, those qualities. But that information, as far as I can tell, it isn't out there on the internet anywhere. Like people are only finding that out when they buy the sweater, when they spend $250 and then it shows up at their door. So I wanted to share that with all of you. And I'm also really glad that I got the opportunity to find out that the ones that have been dyed are softer. I suspected that that was the case. And now I have confirmed that that is the case. Now I'm going to move into talking about the fit. 
which only applies to this sweater, the number 17 jumper that I have on. And here we get into something kind of interesting about this brand, which is that each style only comes in one size. There are different sizes available, but it's because there are different styles. So for example, some of the sweaters are called mini, and you can tell that they're smaller because they're more fitted on the models. And some of them are very oversized on the models. And you can tell that they would fit a wider range of body sizes and body types because they could be oversized on people who are small. Although I feel like with this style, if you're quite small, you might be sized out of it like in the other direction. And with the smaller styles, some people are going to be sized out because the sweaters are too small for them. And I will link obviously their website down below. And I'm specifically going to link the FAQ page because their answers to questions about sizing and why they don't offer different sizes make a lot of sense to me. And it has to do with the fact that they are such a small business and they're trying really, really hard to be sustainable in absolutely every way without the sweaters getting enormously expensive. And one of the ways that they're managing to even be in production and keep costs down and make it work and offer the sweaters at the price at which they're offered. One of the ways they're doing that is by simplifying the process behind the scenes by having each one just be offered in one size. As someone who used to own a small business making clothes, that makes a lot of sense to me. And it's very unusual to see these days. And I know that it's potentially controversial. So rather than me trying to explain it, I'm just going to leave the link and you can click through and read what they have to say. And then you can decide what you think about what they say about it. So I usually wear a size medium in tops. That's usually my proper size, sometimes a small. I am almost 5'9 and I have a very long torso. And this, the number 17, is massive on me. The arms come down completely over my fingers. The hem comes down past my hips, pretty much completely covering my bum. The torso portion of it, the bodice is extremely wide. I think that I could probably fit like three or four of myself inside of it comfortably. The shoulder is, the seam is dropped on the shoulder, which is another thing that makes it really size versatile because even if my shoulders were much broader or much more slender, it wouldn't change too much like the way that it hangs off of my frame. If you're going to offer a sweater in only one size, I feel like this one, and I think this is true of a number of the sweaters that they offer. This one in particular though has a bunch of specific little characteristics that optimize it for versatility. And I love the way that it fits. I love the way that it makes me feel and I love how it looks as well. I feel like there's something really chic about this oversized and super slouchy, just like big presence. Like the knit is a big presence on the body. Something I particularly like about it is that the turtleneck stands up on its own without being too tight, right? So it's not like choking my neck. And some turtlenecks like this or some high ribbed necks, they're kind of flimsy. So they either have to be tight to your neck or they're like slouching and falling over. And I don't like that. It's one of my like fashion pet peeves when a collar is like limp. So I love how it just stands up like this on its own. It can also be folded down. Uh, I think a lot of people wear it this way because they don't like having like a, they don't like having like a sweater up in their face. I really like having a sweater up in my grill and uh, I like the look of it when it's popped up like this more than I like the look of it folded over, but it's designed to be worn either way. In fact, I would say that of everything about it, the collar and the way that it stands up is the thing that makes me feel like super dumb. Die hard. That's the thing that I'm just like, this, this, this forever. I absolutely love that feature. The construction is impeccable. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's like exactly what you would expect for a sweater at this price point that's been made so carefully by such a conscientious brand. It's just flawless inside and out. The color surprised me a little bit. Let me look at the picture. Uh, you can tell from the picture that it's sort of speckled, but I think that that speckled quality is more dominant in person maybe than I was expecting it to be, but actually it's like it's more dominant on camera than I was expecting it to be. It's weird, when I look at my arm or look at myself even in the mirror right here, it looks more one color. It looks a little bit more blended. And I, I actually like that. When I look at the footage of myself wearing this sweater, it, the white speckles really show up. So I was a little surprised when I first edited 
back the, um, this is like the first video that I filmed wearing this. I think it was the Glossier review. When I edited that back, I was like, whoa, I really look like I'm wearing a speckled sweater. I, I really like the color. I think in person, it's very much like I was expecting it to look based on the images on the website. And then weirdly, I think that in the footage you guys have seen of me, it, it looks a little more graphic than, than it looks to me in real life. What I had hoped that this color would provide in terms of it feeling like I can, you know, wear it to do anything and I don't feel precious about it, it definitely has achieved that. And I've worn it like to cook a bunch of times. I've worn it a lot and I love the feeling that I can like do anything in it. So I think that I made the right choice for me for my first Baba sweater, I think I made the right choice in color, and I definitely made the right choice in silhouette. I'm really passionate about this cut. Okay, so that's what it's like in person. If there's something that I forgot to address, please ask your questions in the comments down below. Let's talk about where. So the next question is, how much have I worn it? And to me, uh, there in the, um, I guess like the minimalist fashion or the capsule wardrobe world, there's this thing about wearing something 30 times. Like, a, I think that the idea is that a piece of clothing really pays for itself or really is like worth the investment of money or time or space or whatever you've devoted to it if you wear it 30 times. It's like a mile marker for people. And so adjacent to this question, I kind of have the question like, will I wear it 30 times? I would like to ask myself that every time I'm buying an investment piece. Let me tell you, I may have already worn it 30 times, <laughs> like just in the past couple of months. Maybe not quite that many. I think the thing about the 30 times marker is that it's a lot harder to wear something 30 times than you think it is. When you start counting, you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've worn it every day for, for years. And then you count and you're like, oh, I've actually only worn it 12 times, you know? But I think that I have definitely worn it. I think probably more than 20 times in the couple of months. I've worn it so many times and I'm definitely going to wear it 30 times, probably before the end of the year. I feel myself reaching for it Partly because I I think it's chic, largely because it's so warm, cozy, and comfortable, and makes me feel good. It serves the practical pur purpose of keeping me warm, but it also makes me feel like I look good, and it also makes me feel physically good inside because it's like this warm, cozy hug. So it has that magical combination for me of being a loungewear and fashion and in its own way kind of polished. I feel like when I, especially when I'm wearing not that much makeup, I feel very put together in a, in a way that's specific to my like off days or my no makeup makeup days, put together and polished in like an earthy way when I'm wearing it. And I do spend a lot of my life kind of in that state with my style or my fashion, like in that state. This sweater is like the queen of that state. How has it worn over time? So I've had it for a couple months. I've worn it again, like maybe even actually 30 times. I should have counted, but I didn't. I've worn it a lot. It's pilling. Here's the thing though. So it, I'm going to try to show you. It's actually a bit difficult to see the pills on camera because of the kind of speckled quality of this color, but it's not hard to see them in person. It's pilling. I recently purchased, is it, or it has to be here. I have to show it to you. This depilling tool. And it is amazing. And I have no issue with the little pills that are showing up on this sweater, which are there just because I've worn it so much. You know what I mean? Because I know that I'll be able to remove the pills. And I've used this actually a couple times already. It, it plugs in they have like a battery operated one and they have one that plugs in. I kind of wish I'd gotten the battery operated one because it's annoying to have to be near an outlet. I wish I could just take this and like, zzz, you know, in my closet, but instead I have to like bring the sweaters over to where there's an outlet. I mean, it's a small thing, small price to pay because it's amazing. So um, it has like these blades and it's unplugged, so it won't turn on right now, but you, you turn it on the, and you just rub this over the surface and it shaves the pills off and it leaves your knitwear looking brand new. I didn't used to know that there was such a thing as a depiller like that and that it would work so beautifully. In fact, as soon as I started using it on this pair of beautiful wool knit pants that I had that were covered in pills and like almost unwearable, when I finished with them, they were they looked good as new and I, I was over the moon. As soon as I started doing that, I remembered that a year or two ago, I like got rid of a sweater that I really loved and that was still in good shape because it was covered in pills and I was just like, it looks so terrible and I don't know what to do about this. But there is something you can do about that. You can get one of these little machines and like remove all of the pills. So it's pilling a little bit because of, you know, being worn so much. And it also might be just because it arrived to me in such a pristine condition of like 
perfect, raw, not very intensely processed wool. It might be that it kind of has a little pilling to do kind of before like just to get the initial, I'm kind of making this up, but I, I could see it happening that it would like pill a bit and then I remove those pills and it just doesn't doesn't pill as badly for the rest of its life. I wonder if the, um, the eco dyed version is going to like pill as much because the surface feels much smoother and much sort of, the, the yarn kind of feels like more contained, more like folded in on itself than this one, which which has like this texture. Like touching the dyed one, the red one, it's hard to imagine it pilling in the way that this one has. I just feel like it's gonna behave a little bit differently. I just know that that's like a thing for people. And so I needed to pass that information along. Apart from that, it's worn beautifully. Like it, nothing bad has happened to it. It's gotten a little bit softer over the course of the couple of months that I've worn it. It definitely hasn't stretched out at all or anything. Thing. I mean, it just feels as sturdy and lovely as it did the day that I first got it. In fact, it, it feels lovelier than it did the day that I first got it. I have absolutely no concerns about longevity when it comes to this sweater. Let's talk about care. What will its care entail? So again, Baba lays this out very clearly on the website, like how to take care of a sweater like this, how to wash a wool sweater. And I've gotten some requests from you guys to demonstrate that, which may be the first time I wash this, I will do, like try to film it. The basic procedure is that you hand wash it in cold water and then roll it up in a towel and like squeeze the water out of it and then lay it flat to dry. And I've washed wool sweaters like that before by hand and they've always come out beautifully. This kind of like really sturdy natural fiber is pretty resistant to getting smelly or like getting bacteria and stuff growing on it. I don't feel like I'm going to have to wash it very often. Uh, and I, I mean, I feel like it, I might not need to wash it for like a year. That's what I'm talking about over here, especially because it's so slouchy that it's not like I'm sweating directly onto it. Armpit sweat is usually what makes me need to wash things like sweaters. It's like either a spill or getting armpit sweat on them. And so they get smelly. That's what drives me to wash sweaters. And this is, it's probably more likely to get a spill on it before it starts getting smelly from wear because my armpits are like, like 18 inches away from the sweater. <laughs> like my armpits aren't making contact with it. So it's care will entail keeping it away from the moths which I've been doing. I've kept it like sealed inside of this like zipper pouch. I actually got some zipper zipper pouches to keep my sweaters away from the moths and I'll link those below as well. So I've been keeping it safe from the moths and washing it maybe once a year. <laughs> its care will also entail washing it by hand, devoting a little time to washing it every once in a while. No problem. Will it last forever? I think so. I mean, I think it is likely to do exactly what they claim and to be a piece that I can like literally wear for the rest of my life. There's nothing to indicate to me so far that it's going to get worn out. And there's also nothing to indicate to me that there's gonna be a problem with like my wearing of it. I think I, it's not just that it's gonna last forever, it's also gonna last forever in my life. Which leads me to the last question, am I glad I got it? Was it worth the money for me? The answer is intensely yes, absolutely yes. I am so, I just feel like this is the kind of purchase I wanna be making. And it hasn't just saved me from wanting to buy more sweaters that look like it. It saved me from wanting to just buy more stuff in general at all, except for more Baba sweaters, which we'll get to in a second. But it, it has saved me from wanting to buy more clothing in general, because I'm just like, I'm gonna just wear that. And it's not like I'm gonna only wear it. Like I have, I like diversity in my clothes and I have some other sweaters that I enjoy wearing and I'm sure I'll buy other sweaters in my life. It's just the quality over quantity principle is very sound for me and my personal spending habit. When it comes to my personal spending habits on things like pieces of clothing that last forever. And it's interesting, I usually review makeup on my channel. And it's different with makeup when I'm answering a question like this, because makeup, no matter what kind of makeup it is you buy, it's ultimately a perishable good. It's ultimately, ultimately designed to be used until it's used up. And if you don't use it up, it will eventually expire. It'll be eventually go bad and be something that you can't really use in the same way anymore. Clothing isn't like that. At least a piece of clothing like this isn't like that. A lot of clothing these days is like that. And so to me, having made the distinction between clothing that is like that, that kind of has an expiration date via wear, and clothing that doesn't really have an expiration date no matter how much you wear it, and then picking the second thing, even though it costs 
more than the first thing, the feeling of then having that thing. It's affecting me, right? Like I love the sweater, but it's also the feeling of having that thing. It's affecting me and the way that I think about money and the way that I think about my clothes and the way that I think about shopping. So for all of those reasons, on top of my enjoyment of it and how warm it keeps me, it was worth it to me. And I'm really, really glad I bought it. I actually went ahead and bought myself another one during the Black Friday sale that Baba had. And I bought the same style because I love this style so much. Even though I'm very drawn to the other styles, I wanted another color in this style and I wanted the red one. Deciding to get the red one for my mom made me realize how beautiful I think the red is and how much I would wear a red sweater like that. So I actually have it already and uh, it's part of why I'm, I know about the softer wool, the, the colorful wool is softer. This is really going to be really interesting for my long time subscribers because I sometimes do this thing where when I really love th something like a garment or a piece of makeup, I buy it again in another color because I'm trying to like multiply the love. And I've talked so many times about how that doesn't work. It's like if I really, really love something, I have to just continue to love it. If I try to get more of it, I just continue to like the first one better. I always regret doing it. And then I kind of, I sometimes, I, I it's like I always regret doing it, but I've never fully kicked the habit of doing it. I, I keep myself from doing it a lot of the time. Like I catch myself in the act and then I don't buy the second version. But every once in a while, I do it. Like I, a year or two ago, I bought a second pair of those like wide leg linen pants from Linen Fox, for example. I really loved the first pair, bought a second pair, and then I kind of ended up just continuing to like the first pair better. It is of note that in this case, I actually think I might even like the red one better. It's more of a statement. In theory, it's a little bit harder to wear, you know, because it's like this really strong color. And I have to be a little more careful with it because it's not going to be as forgiving as the brown one is if it like gets a bit of grease on it or something. But I think I like it better. The bold, the incredible boldness of it, the, the bright, bold color, the slightly softer quality of the wool, how it feels both incredibly cozy and practical and extremely editorial. I will probably buy like one a year going forward. Well, I don't know, maybe if I don't, because I haven't really been buying anything else. Maybe if I don't buy anything else for a couple more months and they're having like a sale I don't know, in January, which I think they often do. Maybe I'll buy another one, but I suspect that what will happen is I'll buy another one next winter and then the following winter after that. Not forever, because how many wool sweaters do you need? I don't know, five, 10? In short, though, the answer to the question, am I glad I bought it, is like, yeah, 1,000 times yes. I would definitely do it again. In fact, I already did do it again, and I'm glad that I did it again. Final thoughts. <laughs> this is a thing that's really worth it to me. But again, I know myself, I know my style, I know my habits, I know the difference between what I think I'm gonna wear and what I actually end up wearing. And I have gone through a lot of chunky oversized sweaters in my lifetime, enough to know that I wear them until I wear them out. And it makes sense for me to spend kind of a lot of money on one that will never wear out, or at this point two <laughs> that will never wear out. As long as I'm confident that I'm never gonna get tired of the cut, the color, and the feeling of wearing that garment. So yeah, I'm a super fan. I'm a stan. I'm a ba-ba stan. Everything about what they do fits with what I want in my life when it comes to clothing. And I am finding that I feel more than willing to forfeit quantity. And for me, that also means forfeiting the fun of buying a whole bunch of little things, shopping around, pushing that button a bunch of times. I am finding, sitting here in my Baba sweater, I'm finding that I am willing to forfeit the quantity of the shopping, quantitative shopping experience, the multiplicity of the shopping experience that I would have if I was spreading this money around to a whole bunch of little things and the experience of owning a whole bunch of less expensive things and wearing them out and then buying more. I'm finding myself more than willing to forfeit that for just one or two perfect sweaters that are going to last forever. Now, you have to take this information and apply it to your own life, understanding the difference between my situation and your situation. So if this sweater is way above what you can afford to spend 
in any given month on a piece of clothing, then the quality quantity principle might still apply to you, but it, but not with this sweater, right? It might apply to you on a different scale. So not this company particularly right now. I also think that a really important part of this review was the part where I talked about knowing my own fashion, like knowing my own sense of style and knowing what's timeless in my life and what's just a flash in the pan in my life. And I think that part of the reason that I was able to do that confidently with this sweater is that I'm as old as I am. I think it would have been much harder for me to make a decision like this at 23 or even 25, even maybe the age of 30. So that's another thing that might not make this company in particular the right choice for you right now, even if you have all the same philosophies as me, even if you have a similar financial situation as me. But for me, as me, me speaking as me, it couldn't be more perfect. I'm really glad that Baba exists. In retrospect, looking back on the purchase now, I'm happy to have spent the amount of money that I did. It, I feel like before I bought the sweater for years, it felt like so much money. And then after I got the sweater and I, I like own the sweater, it feels like the right amount of money to have paid this company with everything they do for this garment, with everything that it provides to me. It doesn't feel so expensive anymore. It's still a lot of money in isolation, but for what it is, it doesn't feel so expensive anymore. It doesn't feel overpriced, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It feels like the right price for what it is. So take that and do with it what you will. I hope that I've provided the information that you need for you to be able to make a decision if you're if you're here because you're thinking about buying this sweater. Um, but you know, m more than that, I, I hope that I've provided you some food for thought about quality, quantity, decision-making, fashion, longevity of clothes in your wardrobe. Uh, and you know, the, those are the kind of the things that are bigger than Baba, bigger than this review and things that I hope I'll continue to talk about on my channel. Thank you for being here. Did I already say that? If I did, I'm happy to thank you again. And I want to encourage you to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 